Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Shashank Parmar and in today's video we will see about the soil analysis. So let's begin. So what is soil? We can consider soil maybe as any distinguished material which can be natural or artificial which we can see on or near the earth surface. Now we will see what is constituents of soil. Soil is uh, com composed of organic components and inorganic components. So what are the organic components which are in soil? Organic are essentially decayed and decaying vegetative plants, insects, animal dopings, animal droppings and animal plants, animal parts. Sometimes this collective organic fraction of soil is called humus. <coughs> In inorganic components, we can include generally crushed rock and clay materials and these are made up of minerals. Minerals are generally combination of metal and non-metal ions. For example, iron and oxygen combine to form various minerals including ferric oxide. Minerals are crystalline solids and regular arrangement of atoms. Now, the formation of soil. Formation of soil takes by the method of weathering it is a processing where breakdown of rock hap happens and it plays a very important role in formation of soil weathering takes place in two manners first is physical weathering and second is chemical weathering let's look forward to physical weathering in physical weathering rocks break down under the influence of physical factors like deformation by heat and cooled by rain, flood and other natural dis disasters. Then comes the chemical weathering. It is also known as spontaneous weathering. For example, acid rain, industrial waste and that can change the chemical composition of the soil. For soil analysis, chemical composition analysis is very useful because it gives details about the pH of a soil sample. Types of soil Sandy soil it is light, warm, dry and tend to be acidic and low in nutrients. It is often known as light soils due to their high proportion of sand and little clay. These soils have quick water drainage and are easy to work with. Then comes the clay soil. It is known as heavy soils that benefit from high nutrients. It remains wet and cold in winter and dry out in summer. Clay soils hold a high amount of water because this solid, the solids drain slowly and take longer to warm up in summers. Then comes the slit soil. It is a light and moisture retentive soils with high fertility rating. As slit, solids, as slit soils comp comprise of medium sized particles, they are well drained and hold moisture well particles are fine and wet particles are fine. Then comes the peat soil. It is high in organic and retain a large amount of moisture in it. Then chalk soil. It can be either light or heavy but always have high alkaline due to CaCO3 or lime within its structure. As these soils are alkaline, they will not support the growth of erasious plants that require acidic, acidic soils to grow. Iraqaceous plants. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Then comes the loam soil. Loam soil are mixture of sand, slate, and clay. These are combined to avoid the negative effects of each type. These soils are fertile, easy to work with, and it provides good drainage. Here is the images of each type of soil, which includes peat soil, sandy soil slate soil, clay soil, loamy soil and chalky soil. Now the examination of soil. Examination of soil is done by various processes and with various methods. So this methods includes preliminary examination, pH measurement of soil, chemical analysis, observation of particle size distribution, ignition test, microorganism test and analysis then DTA that is differential thermal analysis, then spectroscopy and chromatography techniques and then 
at last density measurements we will see each techniques separately first of all preliminary examination a side by side visual comparison of the color and texture of the soil is done then the soil sample can be examined microscopically for the general appearance presence of minerals vegetative and other foreign materials and then the type of soil color texture and presence of the materials are noted down then comes the ph measurement in order to observe the nature of soil that may be acidic or alkali ph measurement test is performed ph meter is used to measure the ph of the soil analysis for the soil sample procedure first the standard standardized the pa for standardized the ph meter with respect to buffer solution at ph 7 then dissolve weight quantity that is 1 gram of soil in 100 ml of distilled water and stir thoroughly and filter the solution then take the filtered solution and measure the ph value then the observation of particle size distribution set the sieves of different ranges set of sieves of different ranges are used to observe the particle size now what is the procedure first of all take an accurately weighed quantity that is 50 g of soil sample arrange all the set of sieves in numerical order and shake the soil now collect the soil retained in each sieve separately and reweight accurately here the method is given that is percentage of soil retained on sieve number is equals to weight of soil retained on sieve into 100 upon total weight of the soil taken then chemical analysis first of all place the soil sample on a stage of microscope on glass slide and examine it then what we have to add is soil plus drop of water and drop of hcl then we will get we will get two results first of all if bubble arising from the solid particles it indicates insoluble carbonates such as chalk dolomite or limestone and similarly yellow color indicates the presence of soluble iron if we add k4fecn6 at one drop then appearance of green color can be observed so it is confirmed that the pres- it is confirmed the presence of soluble iron then ignition test take an exactly weighed quantity that is 1 g of soil sample from c fraction dried at 105 degrees centigrade is a alumina crucible or pour in a in a alumina crucible or porcelain dish and keep it in a muffled furnace then heat it heat it at the temperature between 750 to 800 degrees centigrade for 1 hour then cool it it to room temperature reweight accurately and record the loss of weight and change in color on ignition color on ignition then calculate the percentage percentage of loss in soil on ignition that the for that the method is given below that percentage in weight loss equals to w o minus w 1 upon w o that is here w o is the initial weight of the soil and w1 is weight of soil sample after ignition microorganism analysis identification of microorganisms in soil sample can provide useful information and in linking soil sample to its origin to see microorganisms soil samples can be examined under compound microscope then dta DTA means differential thermal analysis. DTA can be conducted on any soil sample because of mineral present in the soil are different. Different soil gives different DTA peaks and it is helpful for soil compression, soil comparison. Then 
spectroscopy and chromatography techniques. The trace elements present in the soil like barium, cobalt, copper, chromium, etc. can be detected by various spectroscopy and chromatography techniques. For example, AAS that is atomic adsorption spectroscopy then fluorescence emission spectroscopy ICPMS and GC. Then density measurements. Density of soil can be measured by densitometer and density gradient tube. Then importance of soil evidence. We can determine the source or origin of suspected soil samples by their geological, physical and chemical properties. We can determine the adulteration or presence of heavy amount of trace elements which affects the fertility of soil found in various crime scenes such as heat and run case, accident case of vehicles, rape cases, burglaries, homicide cases, in open outdoor case location and many more. We can also compare suspected soil samples with soil evidence found on victims shoes, clothing, vehicles, vehicle tires and many more places. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you I hope you liked it. And for the more amazing content, you can visit our website www.thesihub.in and make sure to hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.